Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at People Can Fly's recently released cooperative shooter, Outriders, and see how it compares both from a visual and gameplay perspective to the most recent entry to the Gears of War series, Gears 5. Now, when I purchased Outriders, I generally did not know what to expect with it. I had seen some gameplay footage a while back that showed some cover-based shooting mechanics, but I also recognized several elements shared between it and Bungie's popular looter shooter, Destiny. So going into this, I was all set to try and compare it to Destiny 2, but as I played more of Outriders this past week, it really doesn't look or feel anything like Destiny. Sure, there's a sci-fi setting, some character classes, and RPG elements like tiered loot drops, but the game comes off feeling far more like another Gears of War game instead. Which makes sense, because Outriders was created by People Can Fly, who are responsible for creating Gears of War Judgment back on the Xbox 360. So with this video, I want to take a look at how Outriders holds up to a more linear action shooter game like Gears 5, and how Outriders tries to differentiate itself from the popular cover shooter series. Now before we get started, bear in mind that both games are being played on the PC, with the graphic settings pushed up to their highest settings at a native 4K resolution, and the motion bore options will be disabled to capture cleaner still images. I also toyed around with Outrider's DLSS options, just to see if the image would appear sharper when set to its quality mode. But I ultimately decided to leave the option disabled for any visual comparisons, as it didn't seem to enhance the image in any noticeable way. Also, according to a post from People Can Fly, there are some issues with Outrider's launch version on the PC that they are aware of and are working to fix, including some significant stuttering, crashing, and other network-related problems. And while they are trying to actively fix those problems, just keep that in mind if you decide to pick this game up on the PC this weekend. So let's kick this comparison off by first going over the presentation, starting with the design of the character models. In Gears 5, players assume the role of many different characters, with side characters also being playable during cooperative play. Because of this, each and every one of these lead characters are highly detailed, with fantastic animation designs, great use of subsurface scattering and high quality texture maps, along with some advanced shadowing to help really make them feel alive. All the character models hold up remarkably well today, even some two years after the game released. Which is why it's so disappointing when you turn to look at the characters featured in Outriders. Despite both games being built using the Unreal 4 engine and likely branching from the same initial code from the Gears of War series, Outriders looks incredibly dated here with stiff animation work, poor texture quality, and just uninspired character designs. The only caveat to this is that Outriders does let players create their own custom characters, who are also fully voiced throughout the course of the campaign. But the complexity of these models, custom or otherwise, just feels like a major step back, especially when stacked up against the likes of Gears 5, or even any other titles released nowadays. Moving on, we have the environments. Now, here's where I believe these two games deviate the most, at least in regard to their design. Gears 5 follows the same general format as most other Gears of War games. The experience is mostly linear, with players following main objective markers throughout scripted environments, engaging in firefights and then moving from cutscene to cutscene. But this format does get changed up a little bit partway through the game, where players are let off the leash to explore big open-ended environments using a special skiff vehicle. This offers a lot of new opportunities for the series, like extended dialogue between characters to help expand on their relationships, while simultaneously giving players a better idea of what the Gears of War world looks like when taken off the rails. But even so, the game retains its linear chapter style to keep the structure of the story intact, and it will often funnel players back into scripted sequences for the more important moments. Outriders is a little bit more open-ended overall, sharing more in common with the likes of Destiny than Gears. The game kicks off with some linear scripted action to help set up the plot, but after reaching the first hub area, the game begins to really open up, with players needing to trek back and forth across larger level environments to complete objectives. These larger level environments aren't quite as big as the open-ended areas in Gears 5, but they are much more densely packed, with more opportunities for combat and more secrets to discover. However, this comes at a cost, as the worlds in Outrider are often broken up by frequent loading screens, which seems strange considering how small each playable space actually is. You'll even be teleported back to the main path if you stray too far, at least in this introductory area. Gears 5 also features much more variety to its environments, 
The game kicks off with the team dropping into an abandoned facility on a tropical island, offering lots of beautifully dense vegetation over top of some old cracked concrete structures, and it then transitions to a more traditional urban environment, almost as a sort of callback to classic Gears of War games. But then things change up significantly in the next few chapters, where players can explore wide open icy lakesides and a really cool looking red desert region that are still visually stunning. On top of this, Gears 5 adds to its variety with the recently released Hive Busters expansion that includes a cool new jungle biome to explore. Outriders, on the other hand, takes place on another Earth-like planet called Enoch that starts off all lush and green, but eventually transforms into more of a Mad Max-style desert wasteland, with lots of trenches, shanty towns, and civilizations built out of the ruins of fallen spacecraft. It's a setting that we've seen all too often at this point, but I think it works well in the context of this particular game, and what helps to really make it stand apart are its crazy anomalies that will bend space and time with some cool blue stylized effects. As far as the quality of these environments go, there's really no contest. Gears 5 holds up great today, with lots of great texture work and highly detailed meshes that form visually convincing arenas to play in. But Outrider's world feels significantly dated by comparison. Textures are often muddy and stretched out, and areas not accessible to the player generally look like they're inaccessible. There's times where Outriders can look great, and I especially love the incredibly thick 3D dynamic grass that populates fields like this one. But there's so many other assets dropped into the world that fail to match this quality, and it ends up hurting the presentation a great deal. Next up, we have Lighting. Now, this one was a bit more challenging to judge, as both games do a fantastic job with their lighting designs. The way light reflects softly off of the character's armor, the dynamic interior lights from things like the torchlight on the drones, and the way that volumetric lighting was incorporated to help set the mood do help to give Gears a slight edge, but Outrider still manages to hold its own. Right out the gate, Outriders puts on display some nice volumetric lighting of its own, along with a rich color tone that will be sure to give off a good first impression. But between all the nice showcases throughout the game, there's also a number of areas that just feel bland and lifeless, especially many of the interior spaces, that make use of a lot of weak, baked-in lighting that kills the atmosphere that the game is trying to portray. With shadows, things are a bit more even split. There's a lot of great shadowing in both of these titles, especially from environmental props in the more linear areas. But with these same interior areas that I mentioned before, the shadowing seems almost entirely absent in some instances. As for character shadows, I did want to mention some great soft shadowing that Outriders takes advantage of, where the shadow will actually get sharper as the player approaches a light source. It looks great, and I don't think Gears 5 does anything similar, though its shadows also are rendered very accurately, with some great soft edges and very little dithering. Moving on, we have effects. Here's an area where, honestly, I don't think either game really does that great of a job. The Gears of War games have always weirdly struggled with things like fire and explosions, with really low quality alpha effects that feel out of place in the richly detailed game worlds. Even these decorative fires at the start of Chapter 3 just look off. And the water, while pretty to look at on the surface, doesn't react very realistically to the player's movement, or that of other characters in the world either with only very minor ripples that are hard to notice. In Gears 5's defense, there are some fantastic tessellation effects at play when exploring the snow or desert regions of the campaign, and I don't believe there's anything like this at all in Outriders. Outriders also suffers from some subpar fire, water, and explosion effects, but I do appreciate the nice abundance of particles that will flood the screen during combat, along with some nice alpha effects from bullets ricocheting off of cover that help to enhance the scene further. But other than that, the game just feels weirdly bland and simple by comparison, and there's not very many cool effects to show off, despite all of its crazy anomaly-based gameplay mechanics. Collectively, Outriders, at least in regards to its visual design, is a bit of a mixed bag. In the right light, it can look decent, but most of the time, the game just comes off looking like something that would have been released maybe five or six years ago, which I think would be excusable if not for the terrible performance averages I was seeing on a top-of-the-line PC build. But at the same time, I don't think Outriders' visuals were ever intended to be its main selling point. Instead, I get the impression that this game is trying its best to deliver a competent and fun cover-based shooter within the same spirit as other action RPGs like Destiny. The game is all about building up your character using found gear and weapons, while also upgrading powerful abilities to blast enemies away. The campaign is much longer than the narrative in Gears 5, and there's plenty of endgame content to keep players interested after the credits roll. 
They essentially took all the class-based multiplayer progression stuff people like from Destiny and dropped that on top of a Gears of War game, giving Outriders its own unique place in the market that, surprisingly, works better than I thought it would. The combat feels tight and responsive, with the same snap to cover, blind firing, and roadie running that fans love from Gears of War. However, with Outriders, there's a much heavier emphasis on leaving cover to fight out in the open due to the constant barrage of grenades and aggressive, melee-focused enemy types. And the more traditional health bar design prevents players from just hiding in the back waiting for the red screen to fade away, as they'll need to engage enemies to replenish health instead. But at the same time, that personality and style that you'd get with a Gears game feels noticeably absent in Outriders. There is no equivalent to the Lancer Chainsaw tool or the Hammer of Dawn, and instead, what you're left with are some pretty run-of-the-mill class-based superpowers to check those looter-shooter boxes. Another thing Gears fans should keep in mind if they're considering Outriders is that enemies are going to be a bit more bullet-spongy than the Locust and Swarm in the Gears games. If you stick to missions and world tiers within your own difficulty range, enemies should drop easily enough. But now and again, you'll be faced with some sort of mini-boss that can take a bit more ammo to take down. This is somewhat similar to the stronger enemies in Gears 5, that also feature their own health bar. But because there's no tiered loot throughout the course of Gears 5, players are always given at least some chance to take down their opponent, even if they come to the battle completely unprepared. This isn't the case in Outriders. Players will constantly find new gear and weapons from fallen enemies that typically will increase their offensive and defensive capabilities. But wandering into an area they're not prepared for can be deadly and often impossible to pass without ranking up further, or at least going in with friends cooperatively. This system is actually pretty intuitive for the most part. However, there is currently a big problem with the way that the inventory system functions, in that it's extremely unresponsive, and completely blocks out the screen without pausing the action, even when playing in solo mode. The game really does feel like it was tailor-made to be played cooperatively, especially with how well the different class powers synergize with each other which is not at all the same feeling you get when you're playing through Gears 5 cooperatively. What's more, Outriders does not feature any form of competitive online multiplayer either, limiting its experience strictly to PvE. This is perfectly fine if you're only interested in the cooperative aspects of these types of games, but I do feel like this is a missed opportunity for People Can Fly, as the cover-based shooter design popularized by Gears of War would have been really interesting to explore using player-created characters, skills, and equipped gear. Though I feel this would boil down to personal preference. Finally, let's wrap up with a brief sound comparison. Which game do you feel has the superior audio quality and design? Anybody there? Hey boss, we lost you. Getting her straight probe. How's Scarstead? And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, I think it's safe to say that Gears 5 still holds the crown when it comes to the visuals in this style of third-person cover-based shooter. Yes, Outriders offers larger arenas to explore, and the game isn't quite as linear or scripted. But there's an unavoidable feeling that the game lacks polish, and considering that it's a brand new title built to play on old-gen and new-gen consoles, it's disappointing to see it still fail to deliver the visual quality from a game that released a little under two years ago. But again, I don't think this is the type of game that you should be picking up for its visual design. I think this game is for any gamer that likes the feel of the combat in Gears of War and wants an alternative to more popular looter shooters like Destiny. But what do you guys think? 
do you think Outriders is worth checking out? And which game do you think it borrows from the most? Let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.